how important is it for the government to not just give symbolic gestures, but to actually invest and reinvest in the people and the places that were affected by racism? We look at Alabama today, the, the black belt is as poor as it ever was. Fifty years ago, Mark, we were separated, should I say, horizontally by a wall. You know, we, I remember going, to, and I was grew up in South Carolina, we would go down to, down to the Atlantic Beach, and there was a rope. And one side of the rope was Myrtle Beach. One side of the rope was Atlantic Beach. But the Atlantic Beach side was for blacks, and the Myrtle Beach side was for whites. Same ocean. If you went across the line, you would be arrested, just like the back of the bus. Wow. We overcame the, the absurdity and the barbar barbarism of, of racial separation, but now the disparity is even greater now than the separation was 50 years ago. So you look at the jail population, those who are arrested, profiled, arrested, and jailed long time for nonviolent crime, the increase in number of young blacks now who are doing prison labor, which is a human, human rights issue of global proportions, those who lost their right to vote permanently because they've been through that process. You look at the uh, unemployment rate, which is three times that of whites, for example. You look at the when the big football game plays, you begin the jersey schools about who's on the field and all of that kind of propaganda. You look at graduation rates, it's almost like March Madness to play ball, the May sadness for graduation. And so when we go to Birmingham this weekend to commemorate 50 years ago the price those four girls paid, we cannot be unmindful that today we're free but not equal, and there are too many people in a kind of sideline as opposed to an on-the-field position to bring about racial justice and gender equality.